two years old. A couple months ago, she, the doctors told her that she has a very rare form of cancer and she has six months to live. And now a couple months have passed. Of course, she was in a state of shock and great deep silence the first couple months. But now she was accepting the fact of her situation and she was trying to put together all that needs to happen when she died. So she was calling up the funeral house, the funeral, uh, the funeral home. She called me up to talk about the funeral service. As I was talking to her, she told me how her, her children live far away and whenever they come, she's spending every moment with them. She's spending time with family and friends. She's basically preparing for death. Now, she has a bucket list of things, but not a bucket list of superficial, I'm going to do this, 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 and that before I die. She's realizing she's leaving, and she's saying, what's most important in life? My family, my friends. She's getting reconnected back to her faith. She's taking a very sober preparation for death. Now I know many of you, many of us would think this is a pretty morbid topic. And yet, Christ talks about our impending death. Today in the Gospel reading, he talked about what's going to happen when we die and encounter Christ and have the last judgment. He tells us before this passage that we heard today, we have to be vigilant. We have to be prepared. We have to be ready. Because none of us know whether we're given a six month prognosis, whether we're in an accident and it happens unexpectedly, or whether we live to an old age. We don't know. And therefore, we have to be ready. This is why the fathers of the church often told us in their writings keep death in front of you. Be prepared. Prepare yourself. If you're not ready, okay, that's why you need to be get ready. Be prepared. Next week, not this upcoming Wednesday, but next Wednesday, when Lent begins on the first Wednesday of Lent, our first recycle for liturgy. And this year, each Wednesday night, we're going to bring in a special speaker to talk about some subject. The first Wednesday, Dr. Irene Kikanis, who's a professor at Dartmouth University. She's also my first cousin. And she's going to come and speak on the first Wednesday night on the topic of a new book she just wrote, which is entitled, Let's Talk About Death. And the subtitle is, Let's Talk About Death, Asking Questions That Profoundly Change the Way We Live and Die. My cousin experienced a, a terrible, tragic murder double murder of two of her colleagues up at Dartmouth University 15 years ago. And it was a shocking event for the whole community. She was good friends with these people. And so that's what made her start thinking about death. And she also had her, her father, my uncle, who was dying, her brother-in-law who was dying. Um, so she began a dialogue with this journalist who left journalism to begin a nonprofit where he would do massages for people with cancer who were terminally ill. And of course, he would do massages, but the whole point wasn't the massage, it was being able to talk to people, or better yet, be able to listen to people who were dying. So, anyway, my cousin, the professor, and this journalist turned masseuse started a correspondence with one another. The book is all about their reflections on death. It's a fascinating book. So anyway, I encourage you all to come next Wednesday to listen to her speak on this topic. But I highlight that because she, she emphasizes when we begin, learn, get comfortable thinking about death, we can learn to live life better more appropriate as true Christians.
That's what the gospel story today is all about. It's about Jesus telling us we're all going to die one day. We're all going to be judged one day. But Christ is like this loving, merciful teacher, professor. He says, you're going to have a final exam, but I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to tell you what's on the exam. I'm going to help you to prepare. So he said, when I see you, and you come before me, I'm going to look at your life and say, did you feed the poor, did you drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, visit the sick, visit those in prison? Did you reach out to those in need? Because that was me. You did that. I am in each person who is in me. Did you reach out? And did you help? Because if you did, and ultimately what we realize is, when we think about the judgment of God, the judgment of God isn't this stern judge waiting to judge and condemn us. It's this loving Father who's basically going to lay open our lives and we're going to judge ourselves. Because our actions are going to show, did we notice Christ all around us? Did we reach out to Christ in those in me? And this is a point I really want to highlight. Listen carefully. Christ does not say, did you help the person who deserved to be helped? Did you help the person who you liked? Did you help the person who was a part of your family or friends or co -workers? He doesn't say that. In fact, he says the exact opposite. When you didn't expect it, the least of my brothers. So maybe it's the person who doesn't deserve, we think, doesn't deserve to be helped. Do we help that person? Do we help the person who's struggling with an addiction? Do we help the person who's mirrored in terrible behavior in his life or her life? Are we helping the person who made a lot of bad choices and is dealing with the consequences? Do we help the person who didn't deserve it, but we're not asking them if they deserve it? We're so filled with God's love that it's just an automatic response. We reach out to love to the other. That's the idea. We're so filled with God's love. We open up our hearts to receive God and experience that love. It's just automatic. We meet someone in need, we want to help them out. We meet someone who's struggling, and we want to be there. Whether we know them or not, that's what the Christian life is all about. Reaching out. I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to see me. Archbishop Anastasios of Albania has a beautiful writing where he says, For the Christian believer, every human being is to be respected inasmuch as he or she bears the divine image within. The obligation of every conscientious Christian is to demonstrate respect for the divinely derived dignity of every other person with sincere love, irrespective of whether they believe or don't believe, or whatever they believe. We are called to see the image of Christ in the other person and reach out to them and treat them the way we would treat Jesus. This is the heart of the gospel. This is the essence of our faith. Next week, next Sunday, is Forgiveness Sunday, the last day before Great Lent begins. And the following Monday is Clean Monday, the beginning of our 40 day journey in Lent. And you know, in Lent, we're going to talk about this next week, but in Lent, we focus on fasting, on prayers, on coming to more services. On doing good deeds. We fast when we 
change our lifestyle during Lent, and use the spiritual tools of the church. But we have to remember, that's not the essence of what Lent is about. The essence of Lent isn't fasting. It's not even saying more prayers. The essence of Lent is opening up our hearts, taking away whatever in our lives separates us from God, cleansing ourselves, opening up our hearts so that we can receive God, so we can encounter and be filled with God's Spirit. And the more we're filled with God's Spirit, the more automatically we're going to want to share God's Spirit, share God's love, reach out to the other. Jesus said the two greatest commandments, to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor. These aren't two commandments, they're really one. Because when we love God truly, we're going to love our neighbor. When we love our neighbor, we're loving God. So let us prepare for this Lenten journey that begins <coughs> in eight days. Let us prepare by thinking of the gospel lesson today. By thinking of our own mortality. Think about this 60-year-old, 62-year-old woman who has months to live, unless a miracle of God happens. And that's possible. But think of her. Think of what you would do if you knew you were given a short period of time to live. What would become important for you? And I hope and pray you would prepare. Prepare for the great encounter with God. Prepare by learning to love the other, the one who's hungry, the one who's thirsty, the one who's naked, the one who's in prison, the one who's in need. Let us learn to love them. And by doing so, love Jesus Christ. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Hallelujah. See you.